we're going to be talking about is speech bubble placement. So speech bubbles have a lot of nuance, right? Lots and lots of nuance, right? Sometimes people kind of push speech bubbles to the side over top of the illustration itself, which I suppose, yeah, you can kind of do that a little bit. You, you shouldn't really. So they can be really, really hard to place because now your speech bubbles are part of the overall composition. They are part of your illustration. It's not just like when you're reading a book and you have like the picture in one place and then like the text in another place. It is part of it. Your text and your speech bubbles are part of the overall illustrated composition, right? So they must be readable and they must be interesting. Interesting. And they must be able to fit within the composition. You're not only just thinking of the composition of the panel itself, like the illustrations, but now you're also thinking of the composition when it comes to your speech bubbles. And how can you add those speech bubbles into your composition so that they fit and that they don't feel too crowded or they don't feel too heavy or anything like that. Bubbles are like a form of leading lines. And if you don't know what leading lines are, uh, leading lines are lines that pull a viewer's attention across a screen. If you've ever seen a composition sometimes where it's like a street that goes off into the distance, there's like trees along the side or whatever. This street creates leading lines that make your eyes go towards the sun, right? It's perspective. Though. Or even if like you have like the sun in the background and then there's like a winding road like this or a river. The river is like a leading line that goes towards the sun, right? It's stuff that points there. So your bubbles are like a form of leading lines because our eyes naturally go to words first in a composition so your eyes will naturally go to words first so you want to place your speech bubbles around your composition in a way where you want the reader to look if you're gonna have a composition where let's say some people are running away let's just say it's like a creature of some kind and it's moving quick yeah and there's somebody running away let's say there's like two people running away moving fast if we put all of these two people's dialogue, like if they're talking like this, and we put all of their dialogue on one side, our eyes are gonna go here first. You don't want that static, unmoving. Yes, it's right above the characters. Yes, we know what they're saying, but now all of our visual weighting is A, super heavy on this side, and B, our eyes are gonna go here first. And that's not what you want. You'll most likely want the people to see the creature first. But yes, this is static, it's unmoving, right? All of the speech bubbles are down here. You read it like this, and then you see these guys, and then maybe you'll look back and see that. So your movement is trapped. It's almost unnatural. So what you want is you probably want the reader to go like this, right? You wanna see the creature first, and then them running away. So you'll have one speech bubble here, then maybe another one right here, and then another one right here. Maybe you'll, because it's from this guy. Speech bubbles are like that. This little inner triangle thing symbolizes, or shows that it's coming from somebody else. You usually only use it if there's two people talking and you can't reach the other person. So you could do that. And that kind of shows that it's coming from this guy. But with this one, your eyes go here first, which also simultaneously goes here. Your eyes go like that, then this, and this, the back down here. So this moves across your composition and allows people to see the whole picture by comparison to this. But your bubbles are a form of leading lines. You want them to pull the viewer's attention in a way where you want them to look across your bubbles. Speech bubbles are also a way of showing emotions and different kinds of exchanges. It can show the speed, it can show the volume, it can show the intensity, etc. Don't use the same speech bubbles for everything. Get creative because your speech bubbles can show different tones of voice. It can show different um, ways the situation is being handled. Stick figure. You should never have characters cut off at the knees, by the way, that's considered a tangent. So don't do that, but we'll just pretend that this is like, okay, actually, no, it's gonna bother me. I'm just gonna like, let me just like, never have characters cut off at the knees. Any joints, you should never have a character cut off at that point. Tangents are things where if you go too close to edges or if things line up too perfectly, it makes things look awkward and it gives it attention that you don't necessarily need. So let me just show you what that looks like. If you draw somebody and they're like super close to the edge like this and like their arms barely gets cut off and then let's like, say like the hand ends here and then the hips start right here. Like the legs are just about to start here. These are all tangents. They're all like areas where it goes a little bit too close. So you either want it to like overlap completely, like just completely out of the box like that. So then you don't have to worry about it or have it so they're not touching the box at all. Another one that you see used pretty often is like, let's say there's a tree here and there's a car going behind it. You don't want the car to touch the edge of the tree. Cause then this kind of, it's like it lines up too perfectly and it makes it look like they're on the same plane, right? It makes them look like they're on the same like edge of like existence or whatever. And you don't want that, right? So it's better if you either let it 
overlap the car completely or make it so that the car isn't touching the tree at all. All right, so when your joints are on the edges, it's doing that. Your joint is aligning with the edge of the speed of the bubble or the box way too easily. If you've got like a person, this already is creating a tangent because it's cutting off right at the ankles. This feels awkward. It doesn't feel great. You can even have it cut off right at the knees and it's the same deal, right? It lines up way too perfectly because it cuts off right at the joint. So you're either going to want it in between joints like this or have them not touching the edge at all. So you could have it like this or like this. Notice that like whenever you see like commission sheets, like bust shots always cut off like here and then mid shots usually cut off like here, all right? Or like a bit below the hips or whatever. Never like directly on the hips. Hey, somebody saying, I'm sorry. Standard bubble, not much emotion. This is the bubble you're gonna use most of the time. Like it is the bubble that will show up and be like, oh yeah, this is just what people are talking in most of the time. But it shouldn't be the bubble that's there all the time. You should have different levels of volume. You should have different so on and so forth. It'll show up and it is there most of the time because like most people are not shouting when they're talking. Most people are not whispering when they're talking all the time. You should have a variety regardless. Say we've got like harder edges. This is sterner not quite shouting. With the edges a bit sharper, a bit harsher, they're not really like shouting, not yet anyway, but they're getting there, right? It's kind of like, it's a sterner. You usually use this when they're a bit more serious, when they're a bit more intent on doing something, but it's not quite a shout, not yet anyway. This is a shout. Really big pointed edges. Some people do their shouts like this. That's another way to do it. I personally like the bigger kind of bubbles like this. I'm a bigger fan of bubbles like that where they're a bit wider spread, but that's up to you. But that's more of a shout. I'm just kind of going through a bunch of the ones that I use. These aren't the only ones that you could use. You know, these are just generally the standard ones that I like to use. A wobbly kind of bubble means that they're kind of unsure, a little bit sadder, right? Maybe they're sort of, you know, not really happy with the situation or they're a bit scared of the situation. And maybe they're a bit unsure of what's happening. Maybe they're a bit like, oh boy, I gotta do this now, I guess. They're kind of stuck in this situation or they have to do something that they're kind of nervous about. Maybe something's happening that they can't do anything about and they're just nervous about it. Lots of ways to interpret that bubble, but it's for wobblier speech. All right, so for this one, this kind of like poofier bubble, with this tail on it, you call it the tail, it's flowery, it's excited, it's happy, it's a puffy cloud, right? That one tends to make them when they're like really, really excited, when they're really, really like, ee, yes, that was great, right? That's one that you tend to use. That's a really fun one. I actually don't use this one very often, but it does pop up and that's one that you wanna use when you're when the character's a bit happier. This one, you start with a shout and then you falter, right? It's a bit of a mix of these two. You start with a shout and then you falter off. Right? It's kind of like, okay, okay, got it, right? That kind of thing. That'll show off an emotion starting and then filtering out. If you'd like to support the channel and the creation of free arts education, become a member on Patreon. So this is your standard whisper. You'll probably see this one pretty often. It's like when somebody's whispering, the lines are all broken up. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's applied to only this bubble. You could apply it to like this one. You could apply it to this one. You could apply it to this one. I wouldn't apply it to this one because this one's meant to be loud, but this one's just stern. Like you could have a stern whisper, like, you know, like people are kind of talking to you like this, right? That's like a very stern kind of whisper, right? You can have like an insecure wobbly whisper. You can have a happy whisper, you know, as long as you apply these broken lines to something, it's a whisper. And this is the think bubble. Think bubbles, there are two different ways that you could do this. You see it a lot like this when the character is immediately thinking something. And then in anime and manga, you'll see it like this if it's an inner monologue. You'll also mostly see it like this when it is like a third person story, but like you only know the thoughts of one character because then this speech bubble, this kind of bubble will pop up when the main character is thinking, right? Because then there's, you only know the thoughts of one character. So you would obviously know whose thoughts they are um, because they're never pointed at something. But these speech bubbles are good if you're like, if the character's immediately thinking or if you just prefer to draw a speech bubble, it's also just easier to do this. <laughs> but you t tend to use this one when it's more than one person who's thinking. When you cut off another character, you can have have the two bubbles overlaid. Say if we have like um, two characters speaking, let's say if one person starts speaking and then the next person can cut them off like this by having the bubbles overlay, right? Like that. You can cut off your characters like this, right? By having another bubble overlaid on top of another one. All right, so there is a typical font used, right? You'll see it a lot with manga. You'll see it a lot in normal comics, right? It looks like that. It's called available to download online for free. The creator of it was like, I just copied the font that's used in most comics and he allows it for use 
for free for indie comics. There is a license that you have to get if it is for anything other than indie comics that you can purchase, but it's not that heavy of a purchase. But it's called Anime Ace 3.0. You can get it online from Blambot if you so want to download it. But you can use any font that you want. You don't necessarily need to use Anime Ace. You can use like any font that you really want as long as it's readable. But don't use script. Script is like something, if somebody, like say if the big bad shows up or like some big entity shows up, you could use a different font for that. I've done it before. As long as they don't talk all the time, like it's better if you don't do that. If you have like just something show up once and they're supposed to be like crazy and like formal and whatever, or like ancient, then you could use like a scripty, more crazy looking font just temporarily. But like if you have a main character and they're speaking in script all the time, it's gonna be annoying. It's up to you what you use for your comic some people hand letter their comics um but i know that people who hand letter their comics slowly go insane um i want to try it one day i want to try hand lettering a comic but i know that people who hand letter like a long form comic tend to lose their minds because it's like man why would i ever do that to myself but i kind of want to do it join a virtual class to learn live from our professional artists get creative assignments individual guidance and real-time feedback on your artwork start today and level up your practice if you learn something new, like and share this with a fellow art nerd. If you love receiving quality and free arts education, subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, here's a couple other videos you can check out next.